The JFK 35 podcast is produced by the JFK Library Foundation and made possible with the help of a generous grant from the Blanche and Irving Lorry Foundation. Four years before John F. Kennedy was born, his mother, 22-year-old Rose Fitzgerald, embarked on a journey south of over 2,000 miles. It wasn't her first trip outside the United States, but this time, she and her fellow travelers visited the site of the largest engineering project of its time. The photos she took documenting her travels are available for all to see on our website. That story next on JFK 35. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Hello, I'm Jamie Richardson. Welcome to JFK 35. The archives at the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library and Museum is home to approximately 517,000 photographic images. While most of these feature John F. Kennedy, there are still quite a number that focus on other people or places. One of the more unexpected people we've discussed in past episodes is Ernest Hemingway. Go back to Season 1, Episode 2 to learn why. But it's probably much less surprising that President Kennedy's own family, both the Fitzgeralds on his mother's side and the Kennedys on his father's side, are represented in a collection of photographs called the Kennedy Family Collection. Both families took advantage of the latest technological advances in the burgeoning field of amateur photography to document their lives over the years. Spanning decades, the Kennedy Family Collection was donated by the President's mother, Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy, to the JFK Library in the 1970s. Like any set of family photos, these document the range of moments and experiences throughout the family's lives. As a young woman, Rose used her camera to capture not only daily life with her family in Dorchester, a neighborhood in Boston, but also on her many travels. In 1913, she accompanied her father, Boston Mayor John Fitzgerald, known as Honey Fitz, on a trip with the Boston Chamber of Commerce to Jamaica, Colombia, and Panama, where they got to see the nearly completed Panama Canal. On board the SS Metapan, which brought Rose and Honey Fitz to their destinations, she captured life on board the ship for its various passengers and activity at the ports where they landed. In one photo taken as the ship left Boston, crowds are gathering on the dock to see off the travelers and streamers fly in the air, conveying a festive and vibrant atmosphere. In Panama, photos show the group at the Panama Canal, which the U.S. had been working on for almost 10 years and was nearing completion as well as the landscape and local marketplaces bustling with crowds of people. After returning home, she described her travels as, quote, a wonderfully enjoyable trip filled with interesting and beneficial incidents, end quote. More than 100 years later, her photographs give us a glimpse into that specific moment in time. These photographs are all available to view on our website in the digital archives, and next we'll hear from a JFK Library archivist how they got there, We'll also learn more about Rose Kennedy and photography in the early 20th century. So today I have Laura Kintz, archivist for photographic and textual digitization at the JFK Library here with me today. Welcome, Laura. Hi, thank you for having me. So Laura, can you tell us a little bit more about your work and what's involved in what you do? Uh, Sure. So I, um, as You mentioned I work here in the archives at the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library, um, and I work specifically on digitization projects, which involves basically the work that we do to get our materials up uh, onto our website and available for anyone anywhere to see them. I specifically work more on describing these materials, and once they are scanned, um, either by us or by someone else, an outside vendor, I take a look at them, I try to do some research on what we're looking at or reading about in these documents or photographs. um, And then I write descriptions that go up onto our website. Awesome. And then some ways back, you worked with other archivists on digitizing a unique portion of the archives, the Kennedy family's nitrate collection. Can you tell us about what nitrates are? Sure. Uh, So a few years ago, we got grant funding to digitize some nitrate negatives, which are a form of cellulose film that is very flammable and unstable. And we had these negatives in our collection from uh, like the late early 1900s through the 1950s that were on this uh, nitrate film. And they're from the Kennedy family collection. So they were Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy's collection of, of materials that she shared 
when it became, it was becoming more and more clear that these materials, which, as I said, are flammable and, um, you know, can give off like noxious gases and things like that, but that it was important to preserve these and digitize them before they are, were unable to have uh, any kind of treatment performed on them. So we were able to send them out to a vendor, the Northeast Document Conservation Center, uh, which is here in just north of Boston and Andover. And they uh, stabilized them and scanned them so that we have digital images from these nitrate negatives that are now in cold storage here at the library where we don't have to touch them or access them. But we have the, the images preserved up on our website for anyone to see. That's excellent. I was I was going to ask how you store something like that since there is, you know, noxious fumes in case of things catching on fire seems very dangerous for many aspects of archives and humans. Yes. Um, so we do have them on site in our cold vault, which is, I forget the exact temperature, but it's definitely below freezing. So if they have to be stored in that manner, and it's most important now that we try not to touch them. And we don't, uh, we don't need to at this point because uh, they've been digitized. But yes, there have been cases in other institutions where there have been major fires called, caused by nitrate film. Um, and we do not want that to happen here. So we're doing the best we can to, to make sure it doesn't. That's great. And so how large are these negatives? And how did they, the Kennedy family, you know, did they have different cameras or were different people taking photographs throughout the family in all these years? So yes, they were in different, there were different sizes, nominally about two and a quarter by three and a quarter, as well as some about one inch by two and a quarter, two and a quarter by three and a half, all depending on the kind of the size of film that they were using. And Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy, when she was still Rose Fitzgerald, um, as a young woman was really liked to to take pictures of her travels um, and her uh, in her life at home too. And so she, that some of the earlier nitrate negatives uh, were taken by her during different uh, times in her life. And so the, the earliest nitrate negatives are from about 1908. And those are ones that Rose Fitzgerald, those are photos that she took uh, during, uh, she spent some time abroad uh, going to school. She went to school and, and, what was then Holland, now the, the Netherlands during a, a school year abroad. And she uh, traveled with her father, who was uh, the mayor of Boston at the time, um, John Honeyfitz Fitzgerald, we call him Honeyfitz. And she took pictures during those trips. And um, later there were other members of the family who, who took photos on nitrate film as well. Kathleen Kennedy, Rose's daughter and John F. Kennedy's sister, she, loved to take photographs as well. And so did Ted Kennedy, when he was a little boy, he had a camera that he used to take photos of family trips and of time that they, when they were in living in England, uh, when Joseph P. Kennedy, Rose's husband, uh, was ambassador to Great Britain. Teddy had a camera that he took around with him and would take pictures, some of which were actually published in some newspapers at the time. So he was just a little boy, you know, like six years old or seven years old and had his camera out. So the family definitely was was at the forefront kind of of, of photographic technology. And uh, the and nitrate, nitrate film was a big part of that because it did have some really good qualities uh, of the photos that uh, were that resulted from these negatives, but it just, uh, it kind of, lost popularity due to the, the the flammability issues that became clear. And, and so around the 1950s, it start, really started to wane as a as a, uh, a choice for, for uh, amateur photographers. I can see how that would, if you have better technology coming along, the 35 millimeter that I grew up with, which now is maybe very obsolete as well. Um, and I wanted to add that folks can see all of these photos you're talking about online, and they do capture a lot of the family in their homes and friends and travels. And I did want to ask you about the trip you mentioned that Rose took with her father to Panama. What was the purpose of that trip? It seems like an interesting destination. Yeah. So this trip to Panama that Rose accompanied her father on uh, was in 1913. And Honeyfitz was mayor of Boston at the time. And it was actually a trip that was kind of sponsored by the Boston Chamber of Commerce to investigate business opportunities in uh, Central and South America. And so a big draw in that area at that time was the construction of the Panama Canal. So they, Rose accompanied her father on this trip. She, 
as I mentioned, she went on quite a few trips abroad, um, both as a young woman and throughout her life, which was a certain privileged position to be in. But her sister Agnes and her sister Eunice also traveled with them with on some family trips as well. But the specific one in 1913, when she when their destination was the construction of the Panama Canal, they also uh, visited some other locations. They stopped in Jamaica. They visited some towns in Colombia. Then, as I mentioned, in, in Panama, where they viewed the construction of the Panama Canal, and there's some some great photos of that. So it's it's not only kind of documenting Rose's life, but it's it's documenting a really significant time in history when this major engineering feat was being undertaken. So uh, it's it's a it is a you know we're we're known for having President Kennedy's collections here, but we have this this whole other side of of uh, history, this whole other part of history that uh, that our collections document, uh, which is really interesting to see uh, in these photographs. It is a very unexpected for me. I focus, you know, think a lot about JFK in his time in the early 60s, but going back that far is such an interesting kind of walk through history, as you mentioned. Um, so what can you describe some of the photographs? How, like, how did she document the trip? What was she taking photographs of? What was she seeing? Sure. So uh, this was one thing that was really, as an archivist, this was fun for me to work on because Rose liked to document her activities. And so we have these photographs that she took with her camera. And we also have a photo album that she kept, which is actually, it's photographs that are very similar to the ones that are represented by the nitrate negatives, but they're, they aren't actually exactly the same, but they document the same trip. Um, and so this photo album that we also have here in our collections has original handwritten inscriptions and captions, um, both on the pages and on the backs of the, of the photographs. So when the photographs came to us, when Rose donated them, we were able to at, at the, the processing level, we were able to determine that these photographs were from this trip that she went on. So they were organized that way. But then in cataloging is when we saw, okay, this matches up with these same photos that are in her album, which then also matches up with her diaries that we have in her personal papers collection. So she kept a trip journal uh, that documenting what she did each day of this trip in more some days have more detail than others, but she says where she went and what she saw. So we're able to, in our descriptions that are up on our website, we're able to say with some certainty, this is what she was looking at um, and this is where she visited. So, and then also just Google searching and also historical newspaper archives help us determine that stuff as well. But yeah, this was a, a great way to kind of make connections across these different materials in our holdings. Um, to be able to get a, a pretty good account of this of this trip from her perspective. Yeah, it sounds like a great amount of triangulation of all these different sources to say with certain or some amount of certainty, as you say, that here she is, this is the spot, this is the day, or maybe the week she was there. And so kind of related to that, I know there's a bit of a misconception around getting things digitized. That the, the idea for some that I don't blame people for is that you scan something, you put it on the internet, it's there. People can find it. It's magic. Um, but I know when you go to our website and you look at fo uh, photographs or documents, there's often a lot of information that's there. There's dates, there's names, there's locations, sometimes additional context. Um, and oftentimes, which I always love to find, is that there's another folder, there's another link to something else. So how how do you do that process? What's kind of what goes just beyond the digitizing and scanning? What what do you have to do and go through in order to get this up on the website in a way that's like satisfactory to for your sort of quality control and and everything. Sure, yeah. So, well, I'm very uh, proud to work at an institution that values the the level of description that we do here um, and the descriptive metadata that, that they call it that allows us the time to figure out, try to figure out dates and identify people in photographs. And as I mentioned, we have, we have resources like access to uh, historical newspaper archives that, especially with people like the Kennedys or the Fitzgeralds who were well-known in the area. And that, of course, President Kennedy, when he, during his presidency and pre-presidency also, there's a lot of newspaper accounts of this, of, of their activities and things like that. So we can 
make a lot of identifications, especially in terms of dates that way. But we also just, you know, do a lot of searching within our own finding aids. Um, finding aids are our, it's just kind of like a list of what is in each of our collections. And we do a lot of assigning of browsing terms, which are things that like the Library of Congress uses them as well to help you find books that are of different genres or, or covering different topics. And we do the same thing with our archival materials. So for example, if we have these foot nitrate negatives that we know are from this trip to Panama, we can kind of do a search on our website for Panama or within our own holdings for Panama and we'll find Rose's diary entries related to Panama. So we do, we enter these, these tags so that you can click on it and you'll find everything that's related to that to that topic. So that's how we make a lot of the connections among our materials. And but you're right that it does take a lot of a lot of work. But as we get more familiar with with collections, it's just it's it's fun to be able to make more and more connections. And we try to uh, put those up on our website as right now in our on our website and our digital archives we have we provide links to related materials or where we'll provide a link, for example, to a textual collection from a photograph or vice versa, uh, because it's related to the same event or the same topic. We do that a lot in uh, President Kennedy's papers, his White House, uh, White House photographs. We might have photos of him giving a speech and then also provide you a link to the text of that, the speech that he gave. So we're able to do that by again, searching for the same, same terms and, and also in our own internal systems as well, searching for, for terms that will provide us lists of everything that's related to that, to that topic so that we can share that with the public. And is there anything that you found in you know, the nitrates that were project from a few years ago, but you mentioned the scrapbooks and her diary. Are there any other information or things you can share about the scrapbooks or diaries? Um, sure. Well, um, the scrapbooks, we have 52 scrapbooks in the Kennedy family collection, and these are all scrapbooks that, again, that Rose Kennedy donated with, with her collections um, to the library here. And we are currently in the process of having those digitized, so stay tuned because those are going to be online, hopefully before too long. And those are just a really fascinating body of material because it's not just so we have roses photo albums from her trip her trips when she was um when she was a young woman but we also have we have some of kathleen's diaries from from her childhood through her all the way up you know through a, a few years before her her death when she was uh when she was only 28 and we also have a diary that that ted kennedy kept as a child as a seven-year-old. So it's, it was mostly written for him by one of the family's nannies or governesses, but there are a few entries that are, are in his, you know, seven-year-old handwriting where he was practicing his penmanship. There's ink splotches on the page and, and things like that. But I think in that, in that book, he actually does mention having his camera and taking pictures. So we were able to connect that to some of the photos that are in um, the nitrate collection that are, are, are photos that he took, uh, so there's there's lots of connections across those and and guest books from the the Kennedy family's home in Palm Beach uh, from the the 30s and 40s and same for their house in Hyannisport we have guest books for those to see who visited and uh, and then we have photos from those same time photo albums from those same times as well so again a lot of triangulation like you said which is fun. It sounds like they're a family that was very aware of the historical record then they were kind of actively saying, okay, so when people look back, we either we can look back as a family or, you know, if somehow we end up in a presidential library years later, people can do this. Yeah, I think I think you're definitely right about that. Um, Rose, especially, she kept all of her correspondence with her children and, and again, all of her, her diaries, and she saw the importance of, of, of giving that to us to, to keep in our holdings. So yes, def definitely aware of, of wanting to wanting to preserve things for the historical record. So on that note, Laura, I want to thank you um, so much for think coming and talking to us about the nitrates and the other items in the Kennedy Family Collection. Um, I will urge everyone listening to go to our website, jfklarry.org slash jfk35 to see links um, both about the Panama trip and as well as more about the nitrates and the photographs themselves. And 
see some of this historical documenting that Rose and her family was doing at the time. So Laura, thank you so, so much. Sure, thank you so much for having me and for giving me the chance to uh, kind of give a behind the scenes look at, at what, we, what we do here in the archives. Yes, very important. Thank you so much. To see the photos we discussed in this episode, visit our podcast page at jfklibrary.org forward slash jfk35. We'll also have blog posts about digitizing the nitrate negatives and more on Rose's trip with her father in the Boston Chamber of Commerce. If you have questions or story ideas, email us at jfk35pod at jfklfoundation.org or tweet at us at jfklibrary using the hashtag jfk35. If you liked what you heard today, please consider subscribing to our podcast or leaving us a review wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for listening and have a great day.